Cole Rebo has spent most of his 72 years traveling and working in the bush. And as you can imagine, he'd seen and heard some remarkable things. But when he spoke to local legends, he told us his version of events with his encounter with the infamous Paddy's Lantern. We're out here in 1975, putting the window in the house actually and looked across the paddock towards the mountain. It was a bright, bright, soft, glowing light, ball of light, probably two or three hundred feet in diameter. First saw it, we thought it was in the shed and thought it was a tractor I was working on at caught fire. I drove across there, got there dead quiet, there was no light whatsoever, had switched off. Had a poke around, couldn't find nothing wrong with it. Came back, the wife who was almost having hysterics about the light turned off before you got there. That was a shed there, she thought it was on fire, had a tractor in that shed there. When the light came on a second time, quite brightly, uh, I was still intrigued, I decided to walk on it. So I walked straight across the paddock to it, in amongst some old cars, incandescent, beautiful soft white light, opened the front door of an old car facing the light source, and the light coming in through the window somehow lit up the floor mats under the dash. And this was utterly like inside a neon tube, it was incandescent. I couldn't believe how light could bend around everywhere. The focus of light was up in a patch of the thorniest, closer together grown scrub you couldn't walk into. You imagine trying to walk through that in the middle of the night if all of a sudden it got black dark. And I poked around for a while in amongst just walking around, noticed the way it treated the chrome on the old cars, and I could actually throw a shadow with my hand from it. It was about good enough, the light was about good enough to read a newspaper. It was, I could see the nuclear, so it must have been off the ground. There was no way it was moonlight, there was no way it was anything but something peculiar. The very next day he went around to see the neighbour and the biggest conversation was at lights in the bush. He took me outside and showed me where he'd lined up somebody he thought with a pressure lantern trying to climb down over a sheer cliff in the middle of the night the night before and he was yelling out to him to go back. The next morning he actually physically climbed the cliff to see if he could find tracks or find someone had fallen off the cliff. So uh, that's the only set of lights I can't explain. I'm a bit sorry I didn't go into the middle and push a bit harder. I've been looking for them for the last 30 years, they haven't come back yet.